systems and and the concept will be like it has already been discussed like quite like two three times so in the revision session in the first second we already we have discussed till week eight so and week nine and ten also we have discussed so yeah we'll try to do the same thing whatever like you have told will be mostly so dealing if, the concept yeah kind of like uh, if a sample paper in based entirely on week 10 on such uh, different conditions of kkd and doll will give yeah. <coughs> will uh, will be helpful from in term point of view yeah we'll do that we'll do that for from week 9 and 10 because 9 and 10 was like a bit tricky other than like 11 and 12 are not that like Ninth so was also okay, but tenth was really a bit tricky. Okay, yeah. Me. So we'll do that. Next week we'll be coming up with like revision on week nine and ten. Okay. Uh, so uh, what will the syllabus of end term? It is entire one to twelve. Yeah, it will be entire like from week one to twelve. Entire thirteen week. weeks, including the revision week eleven. Yeah. So in that. Uh, and a more focused on a nine to twelve. Yeah, more focused on nine to twelve. Like most, like half of the questions will be from. 9 to 12 and the half of the question will be from like almost half of the problem will be from week 1 to 8 and half from 9 to 12 and so quiz to is course also like it has been uh like it has been signed up so the score that uh, that the mlf like has like the people has performed quite like at least better than many of the other courses. No, compared to quiz one. Compared to quiz one also, yeah, compared to quiz one, it was almost same, but like last quiz one, the passing percentage was around 70. This time the passing percentage is like 73 or 74. Yes, right. I feel it's it was more easy then compared to uh, quiz one. Okay. Yeah. Passing percent means what? Greater than forty marks. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so seventy four. Twenty three, twenty seven percent uh, didn't get even forty. That is what you are saying. Yeah, yeah. This is what I okay. saying. So, but yeah, but it's like better than uh, many of the other courses. Like uh, some of the courses uh the, the performance was not that pretty like not that good so yeah mlf was like better than the other courses but it was not that good also because uh, most of the problems we have already discussed right almost the pattern see, the mark was see, many, the many have commented in this course regarding some silly mistakes yeah, they might have see, committed yes yeah yeah silly mistake also i, I from my Point of view from where I can think of like where you can do the silly mistake. For those cases also, I have just given some marks. Like like if somebody there was a Cancel problem, on. yeah. So there was a problem like where you have to calculate the radius. If somebody has by mistake just calculated the volume and written, so I have given them the half mark. Like like you have calculated the radius, then only you can calculate the volume, right? Oh, sorry, the height, then only you can calculate the volume. I've given the half marks for those also. So like at least I, from my point of view, because I I thought okay when I I used to give the exam, so like I was doing the same mistake. So so at least like yeah. So th at least that was like fine. So if somebody has calculated the height radius and by mistake he has just calculated the volume and then written okay, so he should be getting some marks for sure. Uh, other mistakes uh, in other questions, I, I can't found like in the MSQ problem, like we can't do anything because if somebody has just uh, written something else, then we can't do much about that. <laughs> but in the round of problem also, if somebody has by mistake written something, like if the answer is two and if somebody has written 2.05 also, like if it's like for some questions, like the, the answer was like almost yeah, exact. You can expand the range to include that answer. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. The, the range we have already, like for some problem, the the answer was like exact. Like there, there can't be any approximation. Like like some question was there, the answer was like two or some question. The answer was like the, for the vector problem, nobody can write like the, the answer was exact five, two plus three. So there can't be anything else. So for those cases also, if somebody has like, 5.01 so okay that's fine
yeah so yeah quiz two fine but the final quiz is left and the final quiz the syllabus is be from from like 9 to 12 mostly uh, what you can do is like mostly you can go through the last term paper first like uh, and the graded and practice that that because it's like even for all the courses i can tell you most of the problem is from graded practice and the last term papers like not the exact one but the, you See, can find for, the for, concept for the question like uh, svd kind of question it at least for me it is really lengthy that is what i feel because there are so many steps involved and from no, the beginning no. till end you have to keep on doing such huh, then i told you like svd problem can be solved yeah it can take time if the option are like bit tricky but what about in the quiz to the options was too simple yeah that is what and that helped actually the just by looking at the option midway i didn't solve it completely i got the answer ha huh. so yeah this is what i do like spd problem can take more than like 10 to 15 minutes but the options was so simple that you would have solved in a, like just you have to calculate a transpose and then calculate the singular values and that's it like you can get the idea key which is the Correct. Because Correct. the following, you don't need, you don't need to calculate all the eigen vectors and then put it in. No, that's what I mean. You don't need to completely solve the SVD. Midway, you get the. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So because yeah, because this is not the three-hour exam. Like we can't give any problem that can take more than fifteen twenty minutes to solve that. Okay. So, so in term also number of questions will be similar or more uh, it can be more because the last the like, quiz final quiz is like around 1 and 1/2 hour right 90 minutes yes yeah so that's why the number of question may increase not much but uh, like this term it was like 14 so final term it would be like 16 17 maximum 18 it can't be more than 8 6 i guess 17 would be the maximum number 70 to 80 thank you yeah so okay so so what's the agenda for today's session we need to have you went through the 11th week yes sir okay so do you have any problem anyone anyone is having any problem from like 11th week any of the topic or any of the problem any of the concepts so what should i do like should i go through each and every question from 11th week or do you want to solve some problem for the solve with the sector like do you want to solve some problem from 11th week so okay even though today is 12th week but we are doing 11th uh somebody last uh, last like one uh, last session somebody told like we want to solve some problem from 11th week i don't have any problem i can start 12th week also Then, then uh, let us uh, let us park twelve week for next session. We can solve problems for eleventh week. All are okay. Okay, so uh, that don't take much time. Maybe we, in one hour we can complete, and then we can start the twelfth week. Maybe one or two lectures we can complete of the twelfth week. That would be fine, right? Sure. Okay, and the rest we'll be doing in the Saturday. Even if somebody has solved the graded, do you have any problem in the graded also or the practice assignment? i can just give you the idea how to solve like i'll not solve but i can give you the idea even if if somebody is like i don't think so you would have solved because 30th is the deadline so most so of the people have been graded assignment question number 16 if you can look into it okay I'll, i'll not do it but i'll just tell you the way how to do yes it. sir sure so So for three events A, B, C. Okay, 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 okay. Wait, wait, wait. I have. Okay, 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 okay. One second. Is my screen visible? No, right? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Thank God. I was like. 
I just open the solution on time. Okay. One second, I'll just open that. Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Okay. So, 11th week. Question number 11. Uh, question number 11, uh, 16th, right? 16th. Okay, for three Is the session recorded? No, no. Yeah, it's going live, right? Uh, public, it's showing. Like it, it's being live streamed, but is it recorded? Uh, that I don't know. Like, why do you need recording? Even because it's going live, right? Oh, okay, 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 okay. Hmm. So it's going live. Okay, so mm -hmm. question number 16. For three event A, B, C, with probability of C greater than zero, which of the following options are correct? So the first option, probability of A complement given C is equal to one minus probability of A given C. So this is like there is no problem in it. This this option seems, I guess, correct or like yeah. So this is simple. Like this is a what like so they don't. The, which option you have the problem? Sir, option B and D. B. So probability of phi given C is equal to zero. Like if you have to calculate the probability of phi means nothing is happening. Null set. Yeah, this is null okay, set. Okay, phi is so null set. Then probability of null set would be what? Like yeah, and C is like probability of A given C would be less than equals to one. So any of the probability generally is less than equals to one, right? Yeah. So yeah, this is like pretty simple. Actually, yeah. I was confused about phi. I didn't know it was a null set. Okay, so null set is like nothing is happening. Like the probability yeah, of yeah. nothing. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Uh, or should we start solve with us? Like nothing, right? Okay. I'll just give you some basic problem. You can just solve it. Just write the answer in the chat box itself. Yeah, so this is the first problem. These are all like very basic problems that don't take much time to solve. So the number of hours you're solving, right? You have the pen and paper in front of you. Uh, sir, this problem is in the graded assignment. <laughs> no, yes, sir. sir. It's okay. a very high question. What Just the values are different. Yeah, values are different. I think we need not discuss such thing. I mean, we just need to go for solve with instructor. Yeah, yeah okay. whichever is there, with wherever we don't need to comment. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is solve with us only. Like most of the question, many of the question will be from graded assignment. That is fine. Yes, like, yes, most, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. In past also there was like practice assignments also had similar questions. Yeah, yeah. 
it's good for also like you also to just solve here and then if you are able to solve if you get stuck we will just discuss that that will help you to solve the graded assignment also right are you guys solving or not yes sir we are yeah okay thank you okay so the number of hours messi spend each day practicing in a ground is modeled by the continuous random variable x the pdf has been given simple and that pdf is like a into x minus 1 multiplied with 6 minus x and when x is from 1 to 6 otherwise it's zero so find the probability that the messi will practice between 3 to 5 hours okay so what so you on need the, to do on, on the probability curve between the points x equal to 3 and x equal to 5 that region area has to be calculated yeah so from 3 to 5 the that area has to be calculated so what you need to do you need to just do the integration of this this uh, pdf function from minus infinity to infinity that is like 1 to 6 and equated to 0 you'll be getting the value of a okay and if you'll get the value of a so you'll be having the pdf function and if you have the pdf function that means you need to just calculate the area from 3 to 5 so just in integrated from 3 to 5 you'll get the Value. Yeah, minus one infinity to infinity, it will be like one. Correct. So that yeah. integration will give that value for a. Mm hmm. Now that integration, I have to remember now. Yeah. So the integration is like minus infinity to one will be zero, and from six to infinity will be zero. So you just need to calculate the integration from one to six, and equate it to zero. Correct. This is a simple uh, function, but some other function comes, then that integrals also we need to remember. uh but yeah mostly it will be like uh, polynomial function will be coming so yeah so something then, kind of e to the power or something no, log no, anything comes yeah. then it will be like bouncer oh e to exponential is like the integration or differential differentiation of exponential function is same yeah log function if it depends on the base then it needs to like otherwise like it's almost mostly it will be polynomial only the pdf function mostly will be polynomial yeah log function and all it can be but like mostly it won't be and if trigonometric function comes then no I no there won't be question. there uh there won't be i can guarantee like at least in mlf there won't be any problem where the pdf function will consist of sin or cos or any any difficult uh, functions will be there mostly the polynomial function will be will be there Not even the exponential will be there for the boson, or maybe for the yeah. Mostly we have in the boson distribution. so what is the value of a you are getting Did anyone solve that? One point two nine. One point two nine. One point. I don't think so. It's one point two nine. Anyone else? One point two nine. 
we are solving for a right yeah it's first you need to get a then only you'll be able to calculate the probability from 3 to 5 So simply one, six four, by one twenty five. Yeah, six by one twenty five seems correct to me. Okay, and then the probability value from three to five. Sir, it's a point zero four eight. I think. Point zero four eight. Okay, let's. So yeah, a you are calculating correct. And then the the value you need to do the integration. I guess you'll be getting point one two five if I'm not wrong. Uh, did anyone get the value as point one two five? I I can't remember the value exact value. I need to solve that. Okay. So you just have to do the integration from two to five with the a value you have already got, and then the PDF function you already have. Okay. So this will be able to solve, right? Or should I solve this? No, sir. It's okay. If anyone other wants, then you can. Okay. Anyone else wants to solve this? Like, do you want me to solve this problem? Everyone got the value a as six upon one twenty five. let's move to the other problem here yeah, this is the second one the amount of time a student takes to solve a, a question is uniformly distributed with an average time of 12 minutes and the variance is 1 upon 3 find the value of the probability from x fly between 10 to 12.5 this is a uniformly distributed right b minus a whole square by 12 b minus a whole square upon 12 it variance What is the mean for that uniformly distributed value? Uh, uniformly. A plus b by. Yeah, so a plus b by two will be equated to twelve, and then b minus a ka whole square upon twelve will be equated to one upon three. You'll be getting the value. A and b. Uh, yeah, you'll be getting the value a and b, and then from a and b you'll be. If you are getting the a and b, then you can get the boundary value, and then you can calculate the area from ten to twelve point five. You can calculate the value. Or uh, you can calculate the value of probability, right? Yes. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. So you can equate it to b plus a by two equals to twelve. You'll be getting the value. One equation will be getting from here. Other equation will be getting from here. You can get the value of b minus a. B plus a will be getting a and b. You can get it, and then you can calculate the area from ten to twelve and five to get the probability. Okay, so it's like point seven five. Yeah, this is the third problem. Okay, so this is the the number of days ahead traveler purchases their airline tickets is exponentially distributed with the average amount of time equal to twenty eight days. If there is a eighty percent chance that the traveler will purchase the tickets fewer than d days in advance, then what is the value of d? How will you solve that? Tell me that. If if you are having the exponential distribution function, what is the PDF for that case? Is it lambda e raised to minus lambda x? Yeah, yeah, correct. So you don't have to do anything. Like you have the uh, the exponent, like the PDF function you already have. So here it is asking if there is eighty percent chance. So you just have to multiply point eight. Equated to that value, you'll be getting the d. Like in spite of x, you just write d, and you'll be getting the value. So here it is the solution. You already have the exponent, like the uh, the mean value. You already been given lambda. You'll be getting. You already know the PDF function. So PDF of like x less than equals to d is what point eight times that one. So you'll be equated to the, the PDF function. So one minus e to the power minus lambda d in spite of x will just write d, and then you get it to 0.8. You'll be getting the equation. You can just take the log upon both sides. You'll be getting the value of d because you already have the lambda. So you'll be getting the value d. Right? Is this clear? Is this clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. 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 Y
Yes, sir. Clear. Hmm. So you'll be having some problem like this also in the graded also. You can solve this, right? Yes. So here, if the mean and the variance of the exponential distribution are one upon lambda and one upon lambda square respectively, then for which condition the variance will be greater than greater than the mean? So tell me the value of lambda where one upon lambda square is greater than one upon lambda. Um, lambda is less than one, like between zero and one. Yeah. So if lambda is between zero to one, then yeah. only one upon lambda square will be greater than one upon lambda, right? Yeah. Second option. Yes, sir. Hmm. So B option will be correct. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Here it is. So one upon lambda square is greater than one upon lambda. So lambda would be less than one. Then only it can satisfy the this condition. Here again the same type of problem that we have solved the lifetime of a light bulb is exponentially distributed with the mean life of eighteen months. So you have the mean life. So you just equate it to one upon lambda. You'll be getting the value of lambda. And then if there are sixty percent chance that the light bulb will last at most six t months, right? So what you do? You'll do the same steps, right? So you have you have the exponentially. This is the exponentially distributed function. So you have the PDF function. You have the lambda value, right? So you have the lambda. You have the exponent PDF function. You link it to point six. Uh, okay, and then taking the log function upon both sides, you'll be getting the value of d or t, right? So the eighteen log ln two point five is the answer. This type of problems are there in the graded or practice also. You can just take the help of this and then come solve the problem, right? Okay, so the, this is the next one. So okay, so tell me. So this is a the 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 x is a random variable that is uniformly distributed from a to b, with the expectation as five and expectation of x square. Can somebody tell me the formula for this? The expect when you have the expectation of x square in in uniformly mm. distributed function, so what is the formula like? You already know for expectation it is like a plus b by two, right? For variance it's b minus a by whole square upon twelve. What is for that expert? Variance minus b of x. Okay, okay. So that the one formula. E Can you tell me? E x square minus e of x whole square. A square minus. E of x whole square. Okay, tell me in the form of a and b. A is and b in the form of a and b. If a and b are the border points, like you have the ex for the uh, expectation, you can directly say a plus b by two, right? Yes. So similarly, can you tell me in the form of a and b, the expectation of x square, the formula for the expectation of x square? Can somebody tell me the formula for that? Like you can just whatever you have told, you can use the same formula with the help of variance and the expect uh, like expectation also. Expectation is what a plus b by two, uh, and variance is b minus a by whole square upon twelve. So you can use this two also to get the expectation of x square. Ah, uh, sir, I think it's a b q minus a q upon three b minus three. No, I guess it's something like this: a square plus b square plus a b by three. So, if you are using this formula, so if you are just write b minus a cow l square upon two l this this place. And this expectation of this x square that that is a plus b a whole square upon four. If we'll just do the addition of both, we'll be getting this a square plus b square plus a b by three. Right? Yes, sir. I think it's the same because we uh, expand a q b q minus a q. 
हाँ सो दिस प्रॉब्लम इफ एक्स इज अ रैंडम वेरियल विथ एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू इज फाइव एंड द वेरियंस इज वन देन दे द सेम प्रॉब्लम ओके सो प्लीज सॉल्व दिस वन सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू द फॉर्मूला इन द लास्ट प्रॉब्लम this all this one just tell me the value final value for this problem if x is a random variable with expected value as 5 and variance as 1 then the expected value of x square is 26 i guess it's correct yeah so it's a simple like you just have to do the addition of both okay tell me the value of c here and how will you do that integration okay so okay so you'll do the integration so you'll be doing the integration from for x from 0 to 2 and from y can okay so can you calculate the marginal distribution of x here and how will you do that how will you calculate the marginal distribution of x integration with respect to y integration with respect to y of fx of joint distribution yeah you have to calculate the joint like you have to integrate the joint distribution So what you will be doing? You will be fixing the x, and you will be integrating with respect to y, right? So you will be integrating for all the y and fixing x. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So tell me the value of c for this case. You just have to integrate it from zero to two, and then one to three. Okay. Is there will be any like problem if I'll just integrate with respect to x first and then y? Or the answer will change for that. Those cases where I'll integrate with respect to y first and then x. Both are same. Yeah. Okay. So what is the value of c here? One by eight, see. Yeah, one by eight is correct. Hmm. One by eight is correct. Okay, so there is one more problem. So suppose that the random variable x is uniformly distributed between zero to ten, then find probability of x plus ten upon x greater than equals to ten. Okay, and tell me the procedure. How will you do that? प्रोसीजर हाउ डू दैट राइट From two to five, only two to five, or there will be other conditions also. I guess there will be two interval. Uh, there only only one one interval. I guess you have told correct. The other interval should also be there, because the answer is point seven, right? So the answer is point seven. If you are saying from two to five, that means the answer should be point three, right? Uh, Second, so please solve this question. I'm not getting words. Okay, I'll I'll solve this problem.
so here you have to calculate probability such that x plus what is this uh, 10 upon x right is greater than equals to 7 right yes and x is what is the x x is a uniformly distribution from 0 to 10 okay it's a uniform from 0 to 10 okay so x is simply this one it's a random variable from 0 to 10 right so this will be 1 upon 10 but here you need to solve the probability such that x plus 10 upon x is greater than equals to 10 right so you need to solve this quadratic equation so quadratic equation is what x square minus 7x plus 10 is greater than equals to 0 so for which and all condition x is x square minus 7x plus 10 greater than equals to 10 so greater than equals to 0 so x square i guess minus if you will do uh 2x minus 5x plus 10 greater than equals to 0 so x will take the common x minus 2 minus 5 x minus 2 greater than equals to 0 so x minus 5 and x minus 2 greater than equals to 0 right so if you see the x will lie from where to where here it is what 2 this is 5 right so if if you will take any point like if we are taking 0 so 0 means it will lie here right in in the zero if you will take x as 0 so that means like the anything below 2 so for those condition x will satisfy x will not satisfy from 2 to 5 because if you will take any value it will not satisfy it will not hold this condition just for example if you are taking 3 if you will put it here 3 minus 5 and then 3 minus 5 so this is negative this is not holding this condition so for this condition it will not satisfy and then from from 5 to 10 it will satisfy right if you will take anything from 5 like for example if you are taking 10 So 10 minus 5 and then 10 minus 2. So it is holding this condition, right? So it is not holding the condition from 2 to 5, but it is holding for all other other cases. So it's holding from 0 to 2. So this area will be counted, and then this is counted from 5 to 10. So this area will be counted. So this area plus this area. So this how much is this area? 1 upon 10 into 2 plus 1 upon 10 into 5. So this is 0.7, right? is this clear yeah okay sir clear okay is this clear to everyone right clear sir okay so yeah so these are like some of the problem that that was there from the 11th week okay so now we'll move to the next week 12th week So the eleventh week is like mostly it will be like the simpler question will be coming in the quiz also because this has been already covered exhaustively in like stats. Okay. So yeah. So twelfth week will anything any problem in the eleventh week till now? If if anybody has any problem, you can just ask me. I'll just just wait for two minutes and then maybe we'll move to the next week. So do you have any problem? In uh, like eleventh week. So could you please uh, explain uh, practice assignment question number nineteen? Like I am not getting the correct answer there. Okay. Practice assignment. Yes, 
this one right yes sir so let x and y be the two random variable with joint with joint pmf okay so a1 will be what what would be the value of a1 the sum of all these uh, probability joint probability should be 1 and from there i can get a1 yeah so a1 you will be getting now what is the condition can you have to calculate probability of what y given x equals to 2 right hmm so so you need to calculate what you need to calculate this one only right sum of row 2 what it will be sum of row 2 Sum of rows. Yeah. So simply you need to calculate probability of x equals to two and y equals to two, right? Upon what? Probability says x equals to two, right? So you need to calculate. You have the conditions. You have to make right. so conditions what is the formula for that you need to calculate joint distribution upon marginal right yes sir so if you are just calculate probability of x equals to 2 y equals to 2 you can just check what is the value of x equals to 2 and y equals to 2 what is that where is that x equals to 2 and y, this is a1 right yeah a1 upon x equals to 2 what is the value where x, x equals to 2 you need to just add it all add this all stuff this. okay okay yeah so a1 upon this sum okay sir okay yeah thank you hmm okay okay so hmm so 12th week right so in the 12th week i'll just open the slide so did anyone went through the content of 12th week okay boy acha in the 11th week there is a there, there are some problem the transformed random variable did any like anyone went through the, the that lecture transformed random variable oh, sir i i went through only one lecture and i didn't get anything what sir happening there okay Wait a second. I'll just open the slide only. if you have not went through this i don't think so then you'll be getting anything from the tool at least first lecture you won't get anything so the transformation problem i'll just go through some problem okay and this is important for the quiz also okay so this is the problem so if you are getting something like this uh, like this is what has been discussed in the 11th week i, I so there is only one concept that has that is that was uh, new apart from like whatever you have read earlier this is the only concept the transformation okay so if you have been given 
so you are able to hear me right yes sir okay so the transformation was like this so if you have been given the joint distribution of x and y okay so you have been given the joint distribution like the pdf has been given in the form of x and y so the pdf of x and y has been given and all the other condition has been given and the transformation is also been given like that there is a there is a relation that is existing between u and u v x and y okay so u is equals to 1 upon 2 x minus y and v is equals to y okay so the transformation is also been given so for like now you need to get the joint distribution of u and v okay joint distribution or the marginal distribution of u and the marginal distribution of v so how will you get it from x and y so if you have been given the joint distribution of x and y and there is a transformation that is also given then how will you get the uh, how will you get the transformed uh, joint distribution of u and v okay so have if, have, have if anybody has went through the lectures can somebody tell me the procedure i'll tell you but okay so just let me know if if you have got anything from those lectures or not and this is important also for your exam or quiz also so you can expect like some problem one or two problem from this portion so from 11th week this is the most important stuff that that for the quiz perspective also and and if you are if in the 12th week also this will be very helpful for you so did you get the point what i am asking okay can somebody repeat like what i am asking that at least can you repeat are you are you asking the procedure for this uh, process yeah for which process like from the joint distribution of x and y if there is a transformation been given uh, so how will you get the trans how will you get that uh, the joint distribution in the form of u and v from that x and y okay this is what i am asking i think sir calculate a matrix uh, then invert that in the lecture which matrix jacobian matrix yeah so you need to calculate the jacobian right so how will you get the jacobian so primarily we need to uh, get this u and v and then we uh, find uh, the various uh, gradients that form the jacobian so you will be getting right. okay so yeah so what you can do so there is a transformation is been given right in the form of u and v so you just try to write this x and y in form of u and v okay so the first step is to express x and y in term of u and v so this is like this is defined in very simple uh, like form here it is whatever i am just showing you it's like i'll just share this slide also like there are four five problem that is been solved there just this type of problem will be there in the quiz also so i just told you in the starting itself so you can expect some problem from this even from this slide itself okay so yeah so this is the, the first uh, the first step is you need to express the whatever the transformation you've been given you just have to express this x and y in the form of u and v then calculate the jacobian okay domain yeah domain you have to calculate because domain you can calculate because x and y domains has been given so and the transformation you already know so you can calculate the domain for u and v also and this is the basic formula so if you have to get the joint distribution of u and v so what you will do you just have to get the jacobian you have to multiply the jacobian with the pdf of x and y okay so you will be getting the pdf of u and v and from this u and v if you have been asked to calculate the domain uh, not the domain you have been asked to calculate the marginal distribution also you will be able to calculate how will you do that because you you already have the the joint distribution so you can calculate you have the domain for u and v so you can calculate the mar uh, marginal distribution right did you get the point how will you do that that is the procedure part procedural part is clear right yes okay so yeah so this was the first question so you have been given the the joint distribution in the form of x and y so okay so the transformation was given u is equals to half x minus y and v is equals to y okay so what do you will do so you will be writing x and y in the form of u and v so you wrote x and y in the form of u and v then the how will you calculate the jacobian so you have the x and y so you will differentiate that x and y with this, with respect to u and v so this is how you will do so you can just differentiate the x with respect to so either way also you can uh, differentiate x with respect to u and then y with y with respect to u or v so 
so this is both, both will be same so you'll be getting uh, so uh, dy with respect to dy or dx with respect to dv and D, dy with respect to dv so you'll be getting a jacobian matrix and then you'll calculate the uh, determinant of that jacobian matrix so you'll multiply with this uh, joint distribution of x and y you'll be getting that joint distribution in the form of u and v yeah one more thing you have to replace this x and y because you have been given the transformation so you can just replace x and y in in the form of u and v okay and then you can calculate the domain so you'll be having this joint distribution right is this clear yes yeah so can you do can you solve for this problem just tell me the jacobian matrices jacobian determinant of the jacobian for this question so you have the transformation u equals to 2x1 sir, v can equals please, to sir, can, yeah. can, can please explain uh, uh, written in a box how to get this okay so okay so i'll just show you so this you have already right so this formula you have already so in spite of x and y you will be writing u and v not replace directly but you have the formula right you have the how will you replace in spite of x you will write 2u plus v okay so in spite of x here it is written 2u plus v and then in spite of y you have written v so you'll be having 2u plus 2v got it okay sir we have oh i i yeah. missed it yeah so you have the transformation this you from this transformation you have got the condition in the form of x and y so so the first the even the first step was this one like you have to express x and y in the form of u and v and then calculate the jacobian and you just have to multiply the jacobian with the uh, the joint distribution that was earlier okay you will be getting the joint distribution of u and v okay okay? Yeah. Hmm. okay so calculate the jacobian for this matrix so this is the transformation given i just wrote the transformation in the form of x y x x1 x2 also just calculate the jacobian for this matrix jacob tell me the determinant of the jacobian for this matrix I think it's a one by two. Okay. Can like anybody else? <coughs> it, I think so. It's correct. Anybody else has solved this? Did anyone solve this? One second. Okay, okay. Just wait for some more time. Can you share these slides, sir? Uh, what for? These slides. Yeah, I'll share. Half. This half. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So half is correct. So yeah, so you have got the idea. So you'll be doing just calculate the Jacobian, multiply with the joint distribution of f x y, and replace x y with whatever the variable that is in given. Okay. Calculate the Jacobian for this matrix for this formula. So transformation is this one: u is equals to x one upon x two and v equals to x two. So the Jacobian is what. The determinant of Jacobian is what? Tell me for this transformation. Uh, for a particular problem, will we we be given the transformation in the question? The transformation will be given. Okay, so we don't have to figure it out by seeing the problem. No, no. The transformation will be given. so last term also there was like two to three problem from the same topic say whole from 11 10th week 
this was the problem that was there like two three types of problem last time also you can see the quiz paper so this is like important one that's why i prepared the slide it's v so i think yeah v okay so it's v i guess v is the correct answer Hmm. Okay, so I think so you'll be able to do this. So I'll just share this slide also. Okay. So this is clear, right? This this concept is clear, right? Yes, sir. Clear. Okay. Uh, sir, I'm getting a bit confused between uh, in the Jacobian that should we be doing uh, do v by do x or do x by do v? Like do what should be do v will be doing okay so do why when we have transformed yeah yeah yes yeah. so, so see what in, in one case do x is the numerator and in the other case do x is the denominator so like no uh, do x is like, you need to different partially difference with respect to that variable with which you need to calculate the joint distribution like you need to calculate the joint distribution with respect to u and v then you need to do the partial differentiation with respect to u and v okay okay hmm okay similarly in all the other cases so so you'll be doing the same stuff because you need to do it with respect to uv so you'll be differentiating with respect to uv okay Oh, sim, sim, and marginal also will be getting right. If you have to calculate the marginal, you can integrate. Where it. this will be uh, uh, useful or applic application will be coming of this? In the next week, the we'll be discussing the uh, the application of this transformation. But mostly the transformation, like 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 you have been given the joint distribution of two random variables. Okay, and then the transformation for those random variables has been given, like in some practical problem, and you need to get the joint distribution of in re with respect to u and v. Then this method can be helpful, right? So every time the joint distribution of like whatever you are calculating will not be given, right? There can be some other relation, like for example, you 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 know the distribution of like parent distribution, like you already know. Okay, this this distribution is a normal distribution, but there is a, some linear arrangement some linear like combination of those normal distribution has been given and then you need to calculate the the joint distribution of other variables are you getting my point like for example x and y has been given to okay, x it, and got yeah so in those cases it can be helpful Achha, in the in this first question the answer is 2 by alpha square what yeah where this two two is coming? Two is I mean, Jacobian two value. Okay. So Jacobian, you need to multiply with respect with and with the joint distribution, right? So the joint distribution was okay, what? Okay, okay, from the okay, it's outside that side. Got it. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So did you went through? Anybody has went through the twelve three content? Not start. Not yet. Okay, so so at least uh, will you be coming like after going through the lecture? Then only if I'll discuss anything, you'll be getting. Otherwise, I don't think so. You'll get anything because those are like totally new topics. Okay, sir. Then we can postpone. At, yeah, at least you have to go through the lectures once, and then only you'll be able to get the part. So the transformation, the concept of transformation, will be used uh, mostly in the first lecture. And in the second lecture, third and fourth lecture is not that difficult because fourth, third, and fourth like will be consisting of Markovs and Chebyshev. Okay, so those part won't be that difficult. So, so if you can give us a brief overview for okay. lectures one and two, then it will be easy for us. Okay, I'll just tell you the. I'll just tell you the brief idea.
so yeah so in the this so in the transformation we were dealing with like uh, only two random variables like right? so here also uh, we will be dealing like here mostly we will be dealing with like multivariate so here we have so many like z1 till zd okay d dimensional some stuff and we already know that z1 from z1 to zd all are normal distribution or like standard normal distribution okay so you can write this uh, the joint distribution of this like you can just directly multiply all this to get the joint distribution of fg where g is like a d dimensional some stuff okay and you already know all the g are like normal distribution okay so this this is pretty simple but if you need to if you have been given some uh, linear relationship that i was telling you so x1 is a random variable that is directly proportional to z1 and x2 is a random variable that is a linearly combination of z1 and z2 where z1 is a normal distribution and z2 is a normal distribution standard normal distribution but you need to get the joint distribution of x1 and x2 okay so how will you get that so you already know that how will you get that so you can directly get, calculate the jacobian and then multiply with multiply uh, the joint distribution and z1 and z2 you'll be getting right so here the same stuff has been done so how will you get that so so no, all the stuff expected yeah. value of x1 and x2 are zero because of the distribution standard normal yeah this is a standard normal so this that's why so that's why i was telling you the transformation concept is pretty important if if you are going through the 12th week if you are not like understood the transformation concept you you would not have got like why we are writing this a so this this a inverse will be the jacobian why is this a inverse jacobian because like the transformation you have done okay so the transformation is what the transformation formula has been given x1 equals to z1 x2 equals to z uh, Rho Z1 plus under root of one minus Rho square Z2. So what I told you the first step was what you need to write x and y in the form of u and v, okay, and then calculate the Jacobian. So here also he did the same stuff. So he just took the Z in the form of x. So he got a matrix that is A inverse, and this A inverse is what will work as a Jacobian for this case, okay. And then if you calculate the exponent, the expectation, covariance. These all all are like the basic properties that you already know, like ex the expectation, like you told, like because the Z1 is having the mean as zero, that's why directly the mean would be zero for this case. How will calculate the covariance? So it can be like three variables also, like x1, x2, x3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can be for like n variables also. Okay. And it will so, be difficult for calculation. Ha. Uh, huh. Yeah. So you'll be going through this. If you'll just go through now, you'll go through the lecture. You'll be able to understand. So this is the term. Like you, you need to write the joint distribution in form of x. So he did the same stuff. He did Jacobian multiplied the Jacobian with the earlier joint distribution. Okay, and so he would be getting this stuff. So like if you'll go through the lecture now, you'll be able to understand just the calculation how you are doing the calculation. So in the end, he he'll be coming up with the basic formula. This formula that you would have read in the stats too. Also, if you are calculate this normal, this the joint distribution. You already know that the function. If, if this is the combination of two x one and x two, yeah. Right? Either here is, uh, variance is one. That is why it, huh, it's so not coming in the denominator. Huh. So this this f x f x will be coming with the combination of f x one into multiply with the conditions one. So you already know that if you need to get the joint distribution, joint is what like joint. You'll be if you have to calculate the joint C M equals to uh, yeah. So joint is simply the uh, conditional multiplied with the joint uh, marginal distribution. So this is the marginal distribution, this is the condition, and this is the joint distribution. So this is a pretty like basic formula that we were going from the starting. But if you start from the like, if you will do the same stuff and you will do the calculation, then in the end you will be coming up with the same expression that you already know. The joint, the joint, joint distribution should be the product of marginal into the condition. Okay. And in the end, he shown with the graphs also. We how generally like if we have if we are just applying some condition like x2 is equal to rho x1, and then we are taking some sample point, you'll be seeing this. This if we are fixing this, like can you, x1, can you explain these graphs? Try to yeah, explain. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'll just explain this graph. So see, for this condition, you already know this is the combination. This is the multiplication. This joint distribution is the multiplication of what the normal distribution of x1. Okay, 
and the normal distribution is x2 given rho x1 1 minus rho so now if if you have been given this expression that means what this is a normal distribution of x2 given the mean is rho x1 and the variance is 1 minus rho x square right if you have been given yes. this expression yeah so x is a combination of x1 and x2 that you already know the x was the con the combination of because you need to calculate the joint distribution of x1 and x2 okay so the joint distribution x x1 is this one normal distribution of x1 given this is a standard normal but this is the conditioned one so this is a conditioned one so you already know this is the joint uh, this is the marginal and this is a condition so con in the condition this is a normal distribution with the condition x2 given the mean is rho x1 and the variance is 1 minus rho x square okay so if you need to see the graph corresponding to this so if you have the sample point so if you are just fixing the value of x1 equals to 2.5 so you can just see this x1 is with 6 you have the lot of data point this is the sample point okay and in the sample point you can just see this this is the normal distribution right how this is the normal distribution when x2 is equals to rho x1 rho x1 i already told you x2 is what x2 equals to rho x1 is the mean value so mean value is what rho x1 so this is the straight line just that i already told like rho x1 is the mean so this is the mean at this point you can see this most of the points is here so you already yeah, so know so x2 line mean. is like at different values of x1 what is the mean yeah 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 so mean this is the straight line for the mean value so x2 is the mean rho x1 is the mean okay so you can see this this is the sample point that i just took from uh, the population and this sample point you can see this the so this behaving like a normal distribution and from the conclusion also we already know this should behave like a normal distribution okay so and this so is behaving like a normal around around x1 equal to 2.5 how the x2s are distributed ha huh, yeah so if i am fixing the value of x1 because i am fixed because this is a conditioned one right this is a condition there is a some condition when uh, putting like we are putting some condition so x1 equals to 2.5 so x1 equals to 2.5 and mean is rho x1 so at this point you can see this most of the samples are here and why this is happening because in the normal distribution we already know most of the sample points are around the mean value and this is what happening here also and you can see for this condition also when x1 when x we are fixing as mi minus 2 you can see most of the points are lying at this point right and this point is what this point is mean value because this mean straight line is passing through this point right so this is what has been discussed if you'll just go to the lecture you'll be getting a very good idea about this and there are some graphs above before this slide yeah this is the like this is for the row equals to 0.5 we just took some like scattered plot of the sample but this is the important one okay. this is okay. yeah this is just to show how the point if i am fixing something how this is behaving like a normal distribution this has been shown here and then the same stuff has been done for like uh, bivariate normal so some basic properties he has just discussed about that and then so like mostly it's like a transformation only uh so you'll be getting the idea so we'll just go through that in the initial weeks weeks one or two maybe huh. <coughs> professor had discussed uh, contour maps with some graphs and all so during the revision session could, could you please make a note to discuss those contour maps yeah i'll i'll do that surely i'll right. i'll do that yeah so similarly in the lecture 2 he has discussed about the estimation of parameter using ml uh, okay so estimation is parameter i guess most of you would be knowing regarding how generally we estimate the parameter maximum likelihood yes ha huh, maximum likelihood mm -hmm. there there are other method also bayesian method also but here we'll be just talking about the maximum likelihood method okay so parameter estimation is like you already know regarding the uh, po population density like population or the family you already know from where the samples are coming like for example the samples is coming from some bernoulli distribution or from some normal distribution okay so you already know the regarding the the, the feature of the family okay so from where these points are coming but you exactly you don't know you from which family it is coming like you know the nature but you exactly you don't know the nature like from which family particular family it's coming like for example if this, this we already know this is a family of the normal distribution but if you have been given the mean and variance then only you can say okay this 
uh, whatever the sample points I'm getting from X1 to Xn, from this particular mean and if the not the variance has been given, then you can say, okay, this is this all points are coming from exactly this family, right? So this is what you need to estimate with the help of maximum likelihood. Okay. So you need to mostly if, if this is a case of normal distribution, you need to get the idea regarding the mean and the variance. If this is a Bernoulli distribution, you need to get regarding the probability value. If this is the Poisson, then you need to know regarding the lambda. If this is like it depends on like exponential, then you need to know regarding the lambda value from which lambda family this is coming. Okay, you already uh, so this is what generally we do in the parameter estimation, and then he'll be just going through the ML algorithm. And then he is just proving for some like for Bernoulli, there's a formula. Then he'll be coming up with some derivation for unit uniform distribution. What is the formula? And then for some other normal distribution also, he's coming up with some formula. This this this, this lecture is like seventy percent of stats two is covered in weeks eleven and twelve. Uh, yeah, but mostly the the, the, the he's just touching up on all the points. It's kind of refreshment. Huh, because in the MLT you'll be coming up with some heavy math, so yeah, so that's why it's like a refreshment, and then you'll be uh, most like it's not like heavy, but yeah, so there are a uh, bit maths in the ML techniques, and and then you'll be going through the coding part in the ML practices, and then the second, the third lecture is Gaussian mixture model. So yeah, so this I'll be discussing in the next one, but. You should like just law, go... of law of large numbers. I think we can discuss law of large numbers, Markov, Sebi Seb, all has been discussed in the final week, uh, not in the final final lecture. So, so these are all like Markov inequality, Sebi Seb inequality. You have already know regarding this, yeah, but we'll be discussing again. Yeah, it was there in stats too, but it was kind of just uh, as a property, it was stated. Uh, here uh, also it's like like not discuss in the great detail, but yeah, we can discuss that in the maybe in the next lecture. The uh, I'll just come up with one or two examples with the central limit theorem and the law of large number. I guess yeah. So, but first thing is like there's one algorithm also that has been discussed in the third that the EM algorithm. And that is important that you should be knowing. So this is the only thing, the, the, the only algorithm that has been discussed in the MLF. Uh, and chicken and neck problem is also there. So chicken and neck problem is also there. What is chicken and neck? It's like which came first, whether the chicken or the egg. Like if you'll just go through the... Uh, no, the, if, the, the if, if, if we are taking two different mixed uh, uh, distributions and mixing them so then is it like saying that uh, from which uh, distribution a particular point is coming yeah yeah this is what okay. it is this is what it is but there's yeah so to find that there is a algorithm expect uh, expectation maximization is a algorithm that you should be going through how will you do that like how will you get an idea from which uh, like if you are have the Gaussian mixture, like it's a mixture of three or four uh, distribution, like same type of distribution, then how will you get the idea from which, uh, for whatever the point you are getting from which uh, uh, distribution it is coming? So this is what, like generally in, in this case, generally we calculate the probability stuffs and then we came, like mostly it's a type of clustering model normally. So in, in here we do some clustering and then with the help of clustering, we came to some conclusion. Okay. Yeah, so this is the only algorithm that has been discussed uh, in, in this this whole, uh, I guess, uh, MLF contained. Okay, so, yeah, so if you'll just go through once the lecture, then I'll be, like, I'll be in the better position to explain you every step. Because you can now, you can ask some of the doubts also if you'll just go through the content, right? Otherwise, it will become very monotonous if I'll just okay, go through sir, the... Okay, sir. On 26th, we'll discuss. Yeah. So you can just finish the 11th week. You can just submit the graded. And even if you have the doubt, like in the next lecture also, you can ask, like to, today also I thought, 
if if somebody would be having the doubt we can discuss but it's fine because the deadline has been shifted to 30 mostly most of the people generally like fall bit on 28 or 29 only i guess okay so yeah and like yeah but from the 12th week there won't be difficult problem because mostly uh the most of the stops are like algorithm is there and then then some some difficult uh, some difficult what you can say uh proofs and all is there so there won't be much difficult problems mostly the problem generally comes from the chebi seb markov and and the 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 first lecture said the normal the the mixture of different normal distribution so those type of problem will be there so please go through the tutorial also the tutorial will give you a brief idea how to solve the problem if if somebody is just going through the tutorials will be able to solve at least the problem will be able to solve all the problem so all the type of problem i have just discussed and recorded in the tutorials that is there in the graded or practice assignment for week 12 yeah Sir, can you share that sir slides transformed random variables that slides problem? Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll just upload it on my Google Drive. You already have the Google Drive link, right? Everybody has that. There's this. Uh, uh, if okay, if you can share the link again. Okay, I'll just share that again. Uh, I'll just upload that. This is the revision slide. I've given it in the starting itself, and you can see that. uh like i have shared all the uh, all the can, can you can you uh, uh, share this on discourse and pin it so that whenever you refresh it we will be able to see hmm i'll do that also but it's already been shared on the discourse also but i'll just ping that one so i have just shared it here also i'll just so everything is there whatever i am preparing or whatever the slide even for the last quiz also whatever the problems i'll be preparing for the practices i'll just upload it here itself i'll just paste the slide here also and on the discourse also i'll just put so i have done that you can just download it from there so there are like four five problems so those type problem can come in the exam also it's better to just do it and then with that topic so yeah hello sir yes sir i have a problem in svd uh, regarding question sir how to find that that okay so i have yes yeah i have to discuss those topics like um, so i will be sharing a google form and then please tell me which and all topics should i discuss in the revision session so that one is that contour week 10 sir and the svd problem is there yeah week 10 whole week 10 right or only kkt condition kkt condition mostly kkt but week 10 whole right so i'll be sharing the one google form also regarding but the problem what happens when we share the google form like all each and every topic somebody would be having some problem in any of yes. the topics yeah so all the generally the topic generally come but i'll try to just discuss the important one where most of the people generally have faces like svd is like most common one even sir kkt Okay, so next week itself, the first lecture itself, we'll be discussing the week five and week ten. So the first will start with week five ten only. So so in one more request, like please attend. Like if if like if somebody would have uh, attended the live to like the last two three sessions of the revision one, I don't think so. There was like any of the problem that we haven't that those type of problem we haven't like discussed in the revision session. We have almost discussed. it's an every concepts again in the last two or three sessions 
so here also if you are having three four session please do attend those session i think so that will help you a lot in the exam man right actually sir in svd i have confused in uh, q sigma q transpose and use a u root and or something like that i just confused in that okay so i'll just so there is a one slide i'll just upload please go through that slide once and then if you are finding any problem those slide yeah. is like too simple it has been extended here in like very simple form so there is one from some time like i guess from some university so this if you are just going through this slide is like 20 pages and that it don't that don't take more than like 15 to 20 minutes please go through this slide once okay okay sir so this Maybe contains I, all the steps for svd yeah yeah this will contain all the steps and they have solved like four five problem also in this slide so okay so this will help you. i'll share this this also So this yes. Is... In Q two, I just remembered that in middle root under a uh, uh, yeah, eigen value. Ah, so that that is that that is the one of the good ideas. That is like, I just uh, uh, hit and trial method I follow and my answer is correct. हाँ जैसे एसबीडी लाइक नोटिंग विच हिट एंड ट्रायल मॉड विच हिट एंड ट्रायल मेथड ये समथिंग लाइक ये इन मिडिल पार्ट है इन एसबीडी वी हैव थ्री टर्म सिंगलर वैल्यू सिंगलर वैल्यू हाँ रूट अंडर समथिंग लाइक वन सिंगलर वैल्यू इज रूट अंडर ऑफ द लैम्डा दिस आइजन वैल्यूस या या सो इफ यू � Take the root so of that. So if eigen values like eighty one and one, the singular will value will be root over that that much. Mm, I think you are saying if opposite. if singular value uh, if eigen values coming like eighty one and one, then uh, uh, corresponding singular values will be like root over eighty one root over one. Correct. This is what you are saying. Yeah. No. 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 If we are getting the eigen values as nine. Eigen okay. values is eighty uh, one. Then singular value will be nine. Nine. Okay. I mean singular value is <coughs> square of singular value is the uh, eigen values. Correct? Yeah. So if like what you have to do if you are getting some SPD problem, okay. So you can just calculate the AA transpose, even like if a matrix is been given in the form of four cross two or some some bigger matrices if it is been given. So just see that which whether AA transpose or AA transpose A is the smaller matrix. Okay, like for example, if the if the question the A is been given as four cross two, so you should be doing AA transpose A so that you will be getting two cross two as the matrices. Okay, because even if you are doing A transpose, you will be getting four eigen values. The other two will be zero. Okay, so zero zero. So only you will be getting two uh, non-zero uh, eigen values. So it's better to go with A transpose A or anything which where you are getting a smaller matrix. Okay, and with that smaller matrix, you just have to calculate the eigen values. And with the help of eigen values, you will be able to get the at least the middle matrix, the diagonal matrix. Okay, and then with the help of that. I I don't think so. There will be any because no, none of the the the, the whoever is uh, fixing or setting the questions will be giving you any problem which which which, which will take you more than like ten minutes or fifteen minutes to solve one problem. Okay. So even if if I find if I want to make the question difficult, I can make the question very difficult. Like one I can if I just make one by eigen values as zero, or other as non or other as non-zero. So you need to use the 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 Gram-Schmidt method. Okay, that will become again a very difficult to calculate the eigen vector. So if I want to make it difficult, I I can make so it Gram -Schmidt, very difficult. Gram-Schmidt method itself is very lengthy. Yeah. So yeah. So even if the the, the paper is like subjective, then only somebody will give you any this type of problem. Otherwise, nobody will give you this type of problem to solve. Okay. I I just shared the. Slide also you can just go through that slide, and and you'll be in a better position. Otherwise, we'll be 
discussing all those steps in the revision session again once more okay yes hmm. so i guess the next lecture would be on the saturday 2 to 4 but please go through the lectures once like at least go through the lectures once maybe in the 2x speed or anything like at least get an idea so that you can ask some if i'll go through the lectures you can ask the doubts and then we'll solve some problems from the next 12th week also in the in the in the, in the saturday session and after that uh, and from the next week we'll start the revision sessions revision session like with some problem i'll be preparing mostly need, we need to prepare like the the final quiz paper has also been done and been sent thank you sir thank you for the session okay so and the revision session for quiz 1 also quiz 2 yeah yeah we'll be doing the all the steps again okay thank you thank you sir thank you thank you sir mm, thank you Ayush.